Thank you. Ah, you, Mr. Pedersen, we are very glad to host once again uh, you and your delegation to continue our uh, very productive, I would say, though not always easy, dialogue on uh, the promotion of the settlement in Syria on the basis of Resolution 2254, which is your mandate. And uh, we certainly appreciate the efforts you and your team invest uh, in implementation of this important document. And we, as uh, members of the Security Council, as part of the Astana format, certainly would like uh, to continue our contribution, uh, our input, uh, especially since uh, not long ago there was another Astana meeting which you attended. And uh, it's a nice opportunity, I believe, at this stage uh, to exchange assessments, views, and to see the way forward, especially since next meeting of the Constitutional Committee hopefully uh, can be convened soon. Uh, and of course, uh, we uh, note continued relative stabilization on the ground, uh, which is not matched by the efforts uh, of the international community to assist in resolving humanitarian issues, uh, humanitarian problems, uh, and the problems of rehabilitation of infrastructure for the refugees uh, to be able to come back uh, safely and comfortably. Uh, but I hope that with the latest adoption of resolution of the Security Council 2585, if I'm not mistaken, on the 9th of July, uh, co-sponsored by Russia and the United States, uh, the situation must change uh, because that resolution clearly says that there must be uh, deliveries of humanitarian goods uh, cross line uh, and a couple of humanitarian convoys have been waiting, uh, one for more than one year, another for a few months uh, for the reasons which we uh, do not understand and which of course require much, much more effort on the part of the United Nations. Uh, and the same resolution uh, provides for um, specific projects aimed at uh, restoring electricity, water supply, health facilities, schooling. Uh, so there is a very clear mandate in addition to 2254, if anybody needed one. There is a very clear cut mandate for the Secretary General not only to do all these things, uh, but to report regularly uh, how these projects are being, are being implemented. So I think it's a very opportune moment for you to visit and very nice to see you again. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, as always, uh, a pleasure being here in Moscow to be able to meet with you and, and your team here. And uh, let me also start by saying how much we appreciate the strong support that we receive from you and from Russia to the implementation of our mandate. As you rightly said, Security Council Resolution 2254. Uh, you mentioned the, important, the importance of the adoption of the resolution on uh, humanitarian issues. <coughs> I couldn't agree more. I think this is an extremely important issue. And, <coughs> excuse me. and I can assure you that the UN family can do whatever we can, of course, to make sure for the full implementation also of that uh, resolution. And I hope we will be able to report on the progress also on, on that. But as I said on the day of the adoption of this resolution, I hope that the common understanding that we have made on humanitarian issues, that that could also be developed into uh, more of a unity when it comes to the political process. Because we need to make sure that we not only address the humanitarian issues, but as uh, Minister Lavrov said, of course, also all the issues addressed by Security Council Resolution 2254. And you know, here I have proposed a few things. I had uh, the pleasure of being in New Sultan together with the Astana guarantors. Uh, before that, I was in Rome and met with foreign ministers uh, from Europe, uh, from uh, the Arabs and uh, Turkey, and also the Secretary of State uh, of the US, uh, Mr. Blinken. <coughs> in Nur Sultan and in Rome, I gave the same message. And that is that we need uh, to make sure that if we are to implement Security Council Resolution 2254, we need to sit down together and discuss what all of us can bring to the table. 
So I'm looking very much forward to discuss this uh, today in the meeting with you. You highlighted the humanitarian issues. Of course, we also know that the economic situation in Syria is ex extremely difficult. Nine out of ten are living in poverty. We have Syria divided more or less into three different areas. All of this needs to change. But for this to change, we need to start how we concretely can implement Security Council Resolution 2254. And I'm sure that after our discussion today, hopefully we will be able to move a small step forward on all of these issues. But once more, thank you so much for the invitation and looking forward to the discussion. Absolutely, and uh, you rightly highlighted the uh, dire economic and social crisis in Syria. Uh, the reason, of course, uh, is rooted uh, in the conflict and the war, which devastated quite a large chunk of Syrian territory and human settlements, but the absolutely illegal suffocating sanctions, so-called Caesar Act of the United States, and similar activities of the, or lack of activities of the European Union, uh, are clearly adding uh, to the crisis. Uh, and uh, you rightly said that uh, for the members of international community who would like to be helpful, uh, on all aspects of Resolution 2254, it is important to come to a table and to show to everybody what they are ready to put on the table. Yes. So any formats which uh, there might be, we will consider from the point of view of potential added value. Very good. This sounds very promising. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. We can, we can. Thank you. <coughs>